About a month ago, I took delivery of the new HP Spectre X360 with all new redesign, that gem cut design. It's running the Intel Whiskey Lake processor. It's an eighth generation quad core processor. I wanted to test the battery life, of course, test that performance. And I was curious to see how the display would hold up for the past 30 days. And I'm glad I did. Hey everybody, it's Andrew. And this is my 30 day review of the HP Spectre X360 13 inch coming up. Like these kind of videos? Why not hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell? This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter because that's where I post all the latest updates. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you check out my unboxing and first look video. I go over a lot of things I won't cover here in this review. So if you haven't done so, I'll put the link below. Check it out. And a very special thank you to all my viewers as the channel just surpassed a 50,000 subscriber milestone and I couldn't have done it without you so I just wanted to say a big thank you from the bottom of my heart. And to celebrate this milestone I will be posting a separate video this week on a very special giveaway to commemorate this very big moment for our channel so stay tuned for that that will be posted later this week. For the past three years or so, to me, HP has really turned the corner when it comes to the consumer product line, especially with their laptops. And the Spectre line is basically the face of HP when it comes to those products. So I was really interested to see how they would redesign the X360. And so they came up with this. This is the gem cut design. It's a radical departure from previous designs and I actually like it. But judging from some of the comments I got in my unboxing video, not everybody was on board. But I happen to be a big fan of this design because not only is it a good to look at in my opinion, it's also pretty functional as we'll get to in a moment. Now before we get to the benchmarks, here's a quick rundown of the specs. What you're looking at is a 13.3 inch display, comes in two options, either a 4K option or a Full HD option. Now it's powered by the Intel Whiskey Lake processor, either the Core i5-8265U or the Core i7-8565U. They're quad core processors, they're eighth generation processors. It comes with eight or 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and it's configurable up to two terabytes of PCIe NVMe SSD storage. It's got Thunderbolt 3 support as well as having an optional dual eSIM LTE and it also has gigabit Wi-Fi. That's pretty good. This all comes in in a very thin and light package at only 14 millimeters thin and 2.9 pounds in terms of weight. And it's got a pretty nice array of ports, especially it's two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So if you want to connect to an external GPU, multiple 4K monitors, that's an option you definitely have. And I like to see a legacy port such as the USB type A on this, and that's pretty good. And I love the fact they give you a privacy switch, which gives you the ability to turn off your webcam. That's a security feature that I think most laptops should have. In fact, all laptops should have that. Now an added benefit of having the gem cut design is your cables won't be in the way and you won't be accidentally hitting the power button as that was a problem on previous models. So not only is this good to look at, but it's also functional as well. Before we get to the benchmarks, I want to thank today's sponsor, Wondershare, and their excellent PDF element. That's my go-to PDF software on all my devices. Being a content creator here on YouTube, I'm constantly having to deal with PDFs. A lot of companies send me contracts and they're in PDF format. So I'm having to sign them, edit them, annotate them, and I have to send it back to them. So again, my software solution is very important to me. And I turn to PDF Element because not only is it easy to use, it has a lot of the same functionality you get with the Adobe products, but it also comes in at a great price. And that to me is a winning combination. Adding your handwritten signature to a contract is very easy as well as highlighting important facts, important sections of your PDF. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Now the version I would go with is PDF Element Professional. That gives you a lot of added functionality at a great price, $99.95. But right now there's a special discount where you can get it for $69.96. And to me, that is an absolute steal. I wouldn't hesitate on this one. At that price, this is a no brainer. And I wanna thank Wondershare for sponsoring today's video. Now you're probably beginning to wonder, well, how's the performance on this Whiskey Lake processor? After all, it is an eighth generation processor. It's a quad core processor. Now I opted for the Core i5-8265U. You could of course get it with a Core i7-8565U for better performance. 
but even with the Core i5, you're getting very good performance. This is a great product to use for Microsoft Office, email, productivity work, and of course, to consume media. But if you want to do AAA gaming, if you want to do 4K video editing, I would opt for something with a little bit more horsepower in terms of a dedicated GPU. Maybe the 15-inch X360, which by the way, I'll be reviewing very soon. But you can play some games if you turn down the settings. Again, the quality of the gameplay will be determined by which title you're playing, of course. So if the more newer titles you won't play as well. HP revamped the cooling system in the X360. That was a problem in the past. They were get overly hot and that was something they needed to address. So they put two fans in this. They're not overly loud. And for the most part, it stayed relatively cool. Although if you really push it under heavy load, it will start to get pretty warm on the bottom, but not uncomfortable or not overly hot. So they definitely have improved the cooling system in the X360, and that's a good thing. Now, HP really doesn't want you opening up this laptop, so they don't make it easy for you to get in. But if you do open the bottom plate and you do want to see what's upgradable, you can swap out the SSD, although you get some pretty good reads and writes as you see here. But if you want to swap out the RAM, unfortunately, it's soldered on, so you won't be able to do that. The maximum RAM in this laptop is 16 gigabytes. It's DDR4, and that's pretty good. Now, HP claims up to 20 hours of battery life in this laptop. Of course, that's not what you're going to get in real world usage. Now, I opted for the 4K display. That doesn't do quite as well as a full HD display when it comes to battery life. And you can see by these results, that's exactly what's going on. But it's actually pretty good results for a 4K display. That's for sure. Now, their Full HD display is a 1 watt display. That's down from the normal 2 watts we normally see. So that's where they get those crazy 20 hour outlandish claims. I think that's where they're coming from. But in real world usage, I would expect about 10 or 11 hours at least on that 1 watt Full HD display. So when you're choosing your display, that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you do need to plug in, they do supply you with a pretty compact 65 watt power adapter. It's USB-C and a charge under two hours. And that's pretty good. So they does support fast charging. And that's what you'd want to see with this ultra portable. That's for sure. Now, without a doubt, one of the things I love most about the X360 is its gorgeous display. Now, I opted for the 4K UHD version. It has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It's got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This is great for watching content such as Netflix, YouTube. It's a great media consumption device. Now, you could also get it with a full HD display, a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That one also has the optional shore view display, which gives you more privacy if you want. Now it's a 13.3 inch glossy display and it's also a very bright display. Check this out, it's 425 nits, which is really good and certainly above the category average of 305 nits. This is one of the brighter displays we'll get on a convertible laptop right now. It's got some really deep black, some really vibrant colors that pop off the display. I'm very happy with the colors on this device. Now, speaking of the color gamut, it covers it really well at 100% sRGB. So for you creative professionals, this is definitely a device you can look at. And it's got some really slim bezels on the side, but you will notice a chin on the top and the bottom. That's because you're going to be using this in tablet mode since this is a convertible laptop. Now, having used this display for the last 30 days, I can tell you it's the star of the show here. It's pretty much got everything you'd want. It's a bright display, covers the color gamut, and it really is beautiful to look at. So I got to say they did a great job. Now, they do include the HP pen at no additional cost. They throw it in the box. It's got 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, uses the Entrig pen technology, uses one quadruple A battery, and it worked pretty well. Now, as far as taking notes, sketching out artwork, it worked fine. Now, you can opt for the more expensive HP tilt pen as an optional accessory, but I'm not really sure if you really need it. The pen here worked fine. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I'm actually a big fan. It's got some pretty decent key travel, especially for an ultra portable. You're looking at 1.1, 1.2 millimeters, and it's actually got pretty good tactile feedback. I'm actually happy with this keyboard. It's got a multi-stage backlight that works pretty well. So if you want to get work done in a dark room, you have that option. Now, as far as getting work done extended periods of time in terms of typing, it was pretty good. Now, HP has once again gone with the Synaptics driver when it comes to the touchpad. I prefer the Precision drivers, but this one wasn't too bad. You can do your two-finger scrolling. You can do your Windows 10 gestures. I think overall it's actually okay as far as a Synaptics trackpad, although, of course, I would have preferred the Precision drivers. They just seem to be a little bit more responsive, just a little bit better. 
And of course, this is a convertible laptop, so you have different modes you can put this device into. You have tent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media. Same goes for stand mode. I like this mode, especially to watch Netflix. And of course, you can put it into tablet mode. You can use this with the pen, great for sketching out artwork, taking some notes, or just want to sit on the sofa and just do some web surfing. So you have a lot of versatility when it comes to the X360. Now the X360 with the 4K display doesn't have an infrared or Windows Hello camera. Instead, you'll have to rely on the fingerprint sensor below the keyboard for that. But as far as the camera itself is concerned, it was okay. I would say it's adequate for Skype for doing web conferencing. Nothing special, nothing outstanding. Now, one thing good about the fingerprint sensor, it's tied to the BIOS, so you get an added layer of security. Worked well, registering my finger pretty much every time I used it. Overall, good job in that department. Now, when it comes to audio, these are Bang & Olufsen's quad speakers, so you're getting some pretty decent sound. Gets loud, it's somewhat rich, and there's a hint of bass on it. I would say they're actually pretty good. So to wrap things up, can I recommend the all-new Spectre X360 13-inch? And the answer is absolutely. Love its gorgeous, sharp, bright display. Really good, sleek, and functional gem cut design. Outstanding build and quality. Really good audio. Love the fact they include the pen at no additional cost. And really good performance out of that Whiskey Lake processor. But of course, this is not a perfect laptop. I think HP can improve on some things going forward. I'm not crazy about the thermals, although it was better than past generations it still runs a bit warm on the heavy load and its underwhelming webcam is leaves much to be desired the synaptics trackpad is okay but i think a precision would have been better and it can get a bit expensive but there are no deal breakers here this is an excellent ultra portable convertible laptop that i have no hesitation recommending i'm going to give it a score of 90 percent making the hp spectre x360 13 inch worth your money so what do you think about the all new HP Spectre X360, the 13 inch model? I'm actually pretty happy with it. I like its redesign, that gem cut design to me not only looks good, but it's pretty functional, keeping your cables out of the way and also putting the power button in a place where you won't accidentally hit it. That was something that was happening in previous models. I like the Intel 8th generation Whiskey Lake processor. I thought the performance results were good. The battery life was pretty good considering I did go with that high resolution 4K UHD display, but really I, there are no deal breakers to me on this laptop. I think the design looks good. I like the Poseidon blue as an optional color, but of course you could always get it with that dark ash silver. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about its price? And it can get expensive, of course, but there are some entry-level models that do go on sale. HP does run sales every now and then. I will put the latest pricing, of course, in the link below. What do you think of the gem cut design? Do you like that redesign? Some people in the unboxing video left some comments. They weren't crazy about it, but I think the majority of the people do like it. But again, I want to know what you think. Let me know. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment, you know where, in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing, let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.